So what makes a good miniatures game? And this is an open mic type of situation. I really want to hear from you guys. Uh, just make your comments below and feel free to take up numerous spots, as you will. But do put part one, part two, part three. That'll be nice. Um, a miniatures game... Now, this is just my... I couldn't be right all the time, right? I think... I think what happens is sometimes I say an opinion or kind of an off-handed idea, and there are a few people who think that I'm being dogmatic, that I'm saying, well, this is how it is. And that is not always the case, because I realize I could be wrong. What else is there? What other facts do I not know? What am I not considering? And then there's matter of opinion, back to what makes a great miniatures game. So I can only tell you what I think. Uh, first off... Uh, you got to have support. I have seen, uh, let's say I've been in this industry 13 years now. I had, I think I opened my shop in 97 back in Oregon. And there was a point in time where my games workshop rep frustrated me so bad, was badgering me so much, that I told him I wasn't going to order anything anymore. And I, dis I did a fire sale, sold off all my GW stuff, and I was going to do Cronopia. Ha ha, take that. Yeah, well, thanks, Target Games. Because they didn't support their line. And I think that's what happens is a, a game manufacturer has starts to have like some moderate success. And then they go bananas. And they start getting into too many things. Like uh, the makers of Cronopia, when they heard that Games Workshop was putting out War Master, which is 15 millimeter scale... Uh, miniatures, they, they, it's almost like they kind of wigged out. They're like, oh no, we got to compete in the 15 millimeter range. And as you know, War Master didn't go that far and wasn't that big a deal. They should have just ignored it and stuck with their thing. So that's one. What makes a good miniatures game is they stick with what they're good at and they support their core line. Item two would be that they are solid and they actually have good reliable distribution, they have good customer service, that they create like the support network. And I think a lot of games fall on their face because it's basically, it's a guy or two guys just kind of like, oh, we're doing our hobby, we're doing it for fun, and they just, they make whatever, it kind of ends up being a mishmash of different ideas, and it ends up not being something that they can support in the long run. Because if you're going to get into a miniatures game, it is an investment. It's not just the investment of money or the investment in assembling and painting the figures, which could be money or time, but it's also the time you spend learning the game and the time you spend uh, playing the game as well. So it's picking a, a miniatures battles game to play is a really big deal. And But I'm to a point now where I'd really like to see other games being supported, other games being successful. and But I have some pet peeves. Let me tell you what they are. Uh, one is named characters. So, gotta say goodbye to the named characters. In fact, I'd love a game where there were no named characters. That they just said, here's this type of thing, like Farseer Ancient, and then Eldrad Ulthuan was one of many Farseer ancients, and but that becomes part of the fluff. So in other words, the fluff doesn't get into the rules in that way, in the terms of named characters. And it's just, it's no fun, because miniatures battles really is role-playing. You make a themed thing, you kind of make up your own force, and so it'd be no fun to play Dungeons and Dragons and have someone, you know, make your character for you, right, Zana? Mm -hmm. That's right, not a lot of enthusiasm. All right. No, Xana's got plenty of enthusiasm. She's just a little camera shy. And apparently off-camera shy, too, right? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> if only I would just respect that. Okay, cards. You know, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to disagree, but I do not like the cards on the edge of the board. I also don't like that the cards are fiddly. Like, if you lose them, all of a sudden now you've lost some critical element. So no cards, please. Tokens. Do like me some tokens. It's a great opportunity to add something to the game, but you can't have a board cluttered with tokens. 
Again, I'm putting opinions out there. Say something different. Am I the only one that thinks tokens are kind of cool, but not too many? You know? Uh, game mechanics that I love is orders. I like the thing where you say what a model's going to do beforehand. That's kind of neat. I like how War Machine handles it, where a guy in the thing can issue a special order and it gives them kind of a power. That's neat, too. Activation. Wow. I am a huge fan of, I don't know what it's called, but it's back and forth activation. Like, I move a unit, you move a unit. I move a unit, you move a unit. And that does, you know, you do have to track that a little bit more. Again, with the cards, some games use the cards to kind of, you know, mark what, who's activated. War Machine is a little bit like that. Although you do kind of take out your whole turn at one time. But that does keep things lively. It's great for people with adult onset ADHD. Undiagnosed. Um, Self-diagnosis is hyperactive disorder. Okay. Um, see, but you can be functioning with that. All right. Uh, 28 millimeter, that's really got to be the scale. I don't like the smaller scales. I actually think a game would do well to start making bigger things because people like that. The big kits are fun. But I don't know, you look at, uh, you don't see too many people playing with Stompas or Shadow Swords in regular games. So that's a toughie. Another big thing is, is you're, by the way, you're the master of the start and stop. No one starts and stops like Xana. Is, um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, is cost to actually get into the game. So you've got a couple things. You have little skirmish games that are like, oh, you only need five or ten miniatures to play. Well, that's great, but where do you go after that? I kind of like to be able to build it into a huge thing. Uh, most Warhammer armies that I do are, you know, they get into 3,000 before I feel like I've really done all the things I've wanted to do. So, but there is a happy sort of place with that. Like, Warhammer Fantasy right now, God, you gotta have so many guys, and I really, I think they tilted it, like they made Warhammer Fantasy even harder to get into, like, you can make a Grey Knight's army with 40 figs, but a Warhammer Fantasy army, at least 100, and now that it's really, it's pushing 150 to 200 models to paint up, you know, a big old brick of skit, now they've done hordes, you know, 50 guys in a unit, ah, oh, jeez, dang, I could paint up 50 Space Marines, you know, so, I, I, really, I don't know the answer to that. All I know is I like to have some leeway, but not so ridiculously huge to do things. And I think it would be great if there were a game where it was, you could start small, but you could also build it ridiculously large. Other topic is plastic versus metal. Oh boy, I've really thrown the... <laughs> the, the match on the gasoline stack now. It's, um... Metal has a nice heft. But I am a plastic fan all around now. And I really think to... Uh, I think if you're going to seriously get into the market, you're going to have to start with plastics. With, uh... Yeah. So no company's really doing it the way I like right now. But is that even possible to have everything the way you like? Well, you'd have to kind of start your own thing, right? Which I've mentioned before, we do dream of that. And I am keeping track of things I like, and I, excuse me, that I like and I don't like. So, plastics, plastics is tough because that really raises the barrier to entry. And I have to really compliment GW because they have not sat on their hands. They have improved their game with every passing year. Their game, I mean how they're running their business. The kits they come out with are just more and more amazing. And quite frankly I don't know how anybody's going gonna, gonna to compete with that. But again, I don't think the competition will be head to head. I think the competition is going to happen in this fringe where the industry is expanding. Like, can you get new those new players that maybe have never heard of anything? And that's going to be tough because you need, you need really a network to work through to make that happen. And uh, that that was kind of a gripe I had, because I remember Games Workshop and the distributors. 
which is way back when Games Workshop went to the distributors who had helped them promote their game, get their game out there, and they said, well, we're cutting you all out of the loop. We're going direct to the retailers. And, but they, they did improve their service. Like, they're doing a better job distributing their own game than I think the distributors were. Um, I mean, I lived through that, so I guess I have, you know, room to talk about it. Uh, but it did impress me as, as a little, uh, I'm going to say shoddy, that it was, uh, but getting back to the topic on hand, which is for a game to be successful, uh, and something I look for is good, reliable distribution, is fill rates to get it, because it doesn't, it doesn't matter what other elements your game has, if people can't get it reliably, then there's, there's an issue. And that's why, with, uh, with a few sputters, uh, Privateer Press has done really well. Like, they have been constantly improving their game. And in fact, their miniatures range, as far as I can tell, rivals uh, Warhammer Fantasy. They have, between War Machine and Hordes, there's somewhere between, I'm going to say, 11 and 14 different factions. And if you look at the product list for each one, each one has 30 to 60 figures on it. And they're actually adding things at the rate of at least one thing every week. And now they're coming out with larger plastic or resin kits. I haven't really seen them unassembled, but uh, they're, they're coming out with larger stuff, and I think that's going to do them well. But again, there's that. Another thing to consider is board size, board size and terrain. Uh, like you've got Infinity... The terrain for Infinity, though, well, it could be forests and jungles and stuff, but it does require a little more complicated cityscapes, I think. Not sure on that one. I'm going to have to get back to you. Um, Infinity does fall down a little bit with reliable distribution because they're, um, they're based in Spain. However, uh, if I understand right, a Cool Mini or Not is their own distributor now, and they carry certain lines. And that is a huge, huge deal. And they have the lines licensed for production in the U.S. So they're actually being manufactured, manufactured reliably in the U.S. for distribution. So we're, uh, we're, we're about to see how Cool Mini operates uh, because I am starting to get things through them. And uh, I, I would, you really should look them up. They have some amazing stuff. At Adepticon, their thing was very well stocked, and uh, the staff seemed like they knew what they were doing. I was I was pretty impressed. So you got to look for that in the miniatures battles too. What is the support? What's the distribution? What's the fill rate? Who actually carries them? And uh, that's that's really a big deal. Well, I think I'm trailing off now, but I think I gave us some uh, some food for thought, and you can tell me you can tell me what you think. What what would make the ultimate miniatures battles game? How would you change existing games if you could? And uh, even though I moderately engaged in a bit of it, let's not uh, knock down any particular <coughs> Games Workshop company. And because uh, it's it's easy to pick on the big guy, but uh, without um, but uh, you do you do have to look on look on the bright side. Oh, and it reminds me of. Uh, when people complain about Games Workshop, it, why are you laughing? Because I'm going on and on. You're trailing off again. Am I trailing off? Okay, good. Go ahead. So, it reminds me of uh, Monty Python and the Life of Brian, where the uh, the rebels are sitting around and go, what have the Romans ever done for us? It's like, well, they built roads. What besides the roads of the Ro And then the list keeps getting longer and longer. What have they done? Because the fact is... GW has pioneered, and they have set the bar, and they have, they have basically won uh, uh, a predominant place in what is uh, pretty much a very free uh, and open and expanding market. Anyway, all right, that's it. I'm really done now. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Okay.